My name is Dennis Howe and for a very long time I was involved with the original College of Aeronautics and then the later the Cranford Institute of Technology and in my later years I became Professor of Aircraft Design at Cranfield and also the Dean of Engineering. Before I became a student at Cranfield, uh, I first came, became uh, associated formally with aeronautics when I joined the Air Training Corps uh, as a student at school. From around about the beginning of World War II, I'd been got interested in aeroplanes. I'd always had engineering interests. Started off with railways and locomotives, then went to ships and then aircraft. And I was quite a keen aero modeler. I had learnt a bit about basic aerodynamics doing that. And I just had an ambition to be an aircraft designer. After I left school, I became an engineering apprentice at Ferry Aviation which at that time was producing Firefly uh, naval fighters, about one a day. I did little work on the production line, but I was very fortunate. The apprentice supervisor arranged for me to spend a long time in both the drawing office and also in the experimental shops. I'd heard about Cranfield uh, when I first joined uh, my apprenticeship. I'd read about it and its proposals and then its opening in the flight and aeroplane magazines. And my apprentice supervisor thought I'd done so well in my academic work that the company as a whole recommended me to the Society of British Aircraft Constructors for a scholarship to Cranfield, which gladly I was awarded. By the time I arrived, because I was in the fourth entry in 1949, it was fairly well organised. Some of the earlier problems of lack of facilities had all been overcome and sorted out. We were very well looked after. The, the first year students in Mitchell Hall and the second year in Lanchester Hall and uh, the facilities were pretty well established by that time. Lectures always organized. There were four departments when I arrived, um, four academic departments, uh, aerodynamics, aircraft design, aircraft propulsion, and very newfangled aircraft production with the flight department as a backup for supporting department. Uh, the facilities were very good on the practical side. Um, aerodynamics at that time had a wide range of wind tunnels. The structures lab was very well equipped with large quantities of smaller testing machines for material testing and three large testing frames for larger parts of structure. Aircraft propulsion uh, had a wide range of engines and, and the test facilities of course which were built up in those days. The thing that really happened later was digital computing because it changed the emphasis from practical testing to more computer modeling Becoming a professor was really just an ambition which I was fulfilled. Uh, the best thing about it was, I think, the students. Uh, I, the proudest moments I had was graduation every year. Uh, that was the proud thing, that another lot of students was going out across the world with a Cranford degree. One of the things that I got very involved with was the design of this aerobatic aeroplane here, which was done originally to a specification by the then British aerobatic champion, Neil Williams. He wanted an aeroplane to meet his own requirements and he came up with a specification and some of his supporters came to Cranfield to see if we would actually do a study on it to see if uh, we could produce a viable sort of solution to his specification. And we used it as a student thesis. A couple of uh, the MSc year students uh, did design studies and structural studies on it. They all looked so good at the end, it was decided to try and build it. That was a little bit more difficult. Over the period of time, it was built in what was then the flight department at Cranfield. And the day I really remember is the day it first flew. That was really 
an achievement for everybody concerned. It did involve a large number of people. I believe that the spirit of Cranfield is essentially the mix of theoretical teaching, well taught, and applying it practically to the real life of aeronautics and in other departments to their particular applications too. But in 75 years I visualized Cranfield leading the way. Um, it is unique in many ways uh, and I believe that the world as a whole will get more and more concentrated in individual places and that Cranfield should be leading the way in aeronautics as it is doing in some ways now with its design studies and its practical flying uh, so that it does provide a worldwide facility uh, and I think Cranfield I trust will be there right at the forefront 75 years from now.